Hi everyone, welcome in. This is Marlene with The Room to Bloom. Thanks for joining me today. <clears throat> so I, um, I was just doing some things and it was really interesting because, <laughs> you know, when we talk about like self-awareness, being very self-aware really helps us on our journey. It's, <clears throat> it's like being our own parent, right? It's kind of like when we recognize we might need a nap or we might need a this, right? It's almost as if we step back from ourselves, we sense, feel, and know what's actually going on internally. Because sometimes when we are, when we feel in a storm, it can be hard to um, figure out what's going on. <clears throat> so interestingly, I was just kind of. I'm like, what's up with me today, right? You know, that's just kind of what I was feeling. And then I realized, ah, it's a new moon, right? So energies are way up, right? And so it was like this self-realization for me about, okay, kind of like <laughs> deep breathing, pulling in, get grounded, right? And so I just did a short about that in ways that you can uh, get grounded. So maybe you want to go back and look at that if you are feeling that you have um, extremely say high anxiety or or you feel like your energy is kind of off the charts which can be a beautiful thing but if it's you know you can feel like okay it can be like this i've had one or two cups of coffee one cup of coffee two cups of coffee or i've had a pot or two pots right <laughs> you know what i mean and how strong was the coffee or espressos or whatever so you know, when you have a few and, and you have this um, boost of energy, right, that can feel really good. But when your energy is completely off the charts, it can make you feel very anxious, like you can't settle in on anything. And so when you recognize, you have to recognize it. And when these new moon phases come around, one, you know, this is um, definitely where you can feel this. But it's where you learn to understand how these phases affect you on a personal level. Really checking in with yourself throughout the day. Um, the moon cycles affect everyone differently. <clears throat> but you can be assured that we have so much water in us that moon cycles, a full moon, like it pulls in right tides, it can pull up a lot of emotion out of us, and so we'll be emotional around that. But whatever is going on in the, the atmosphere, we are experiencing on a physical level, right? And a cellular level, really. So it's interesting. So if you can imagine that you're feeling high anxiety, it's almost as if your cells are like metabolizing faster. Like you might be hungrier today, literally. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting to think about that. But if you can look back or look at yourself right now today and say, how do I feel? What's up with me? Or if, like, say in the middle of the night, you're like, what's going on? Why can't I sleep? That's because your energy is super high. Now, here's the thing. If you can imagine yourself being like a surfer, all right, and you want to always catch the biggest wave, right? That's the goal of the, you know, the, um, what, the professional surfers at least, right? That's the goal. Um, and of course, if you're moving into that professionalism, uh, professional surfer, you're like, how big of a wave can I ride safely, right? And so kind of thinking about that, so it can feel uncomfortable when you're way up here are riding this huge wave and you don't even know what's going on. So ways that you can pull yourself down and get grounded, right? So looking at that. Um, but interesting, like let's say that you are putting a business together, right? And you start working with the moon energy to... Ha know like and understand hey I have this extra boost of energy around that time and I'm going to really utilize it because you might say oh I don't know that I, I don't always sleep that well around the moon so I'm going to plan on working late right or I'm going to um, really let my create creativity flow during those times um, so riding that wave right there will be other times and phases 
that you can watch the different moon cycles. There might be a phase where it's like, what is with me? Or you might be riding that wave literally for five to six days because it's three days going in, you have the cycle and it's three days going out. But on that, say, sixth day, you might feel so exhausted and not know why, right? Because you weren't paying attention that for six days you were on like this super energetic high that you weren't paying attention to, didn't know why, but then it's like this, it's like a sugar crash, right? And that sugar crash can feel serious. It can feel like, not like a, you know, oh, I need to lay on the couch for 15 minutes or, you know, 20 minutes. It's like, I'm down for a day or two, right? Two days. It's like, you all of a sudden when you start putting this together it's like okay i'm gonna ride the wave i'm gonna plan on resting um getting extra rest after that right so you won't do maybe as much work or creativity or whatever that is um now if you are a person where say the moon cycle shifts you lower right so then you uh, you might say, oh, for whatever reason, this moon cycle is taking my energy down lower. So then you are going to want to um, start recognizing, okay, if that's how the moon is affecting me, um, because emotions come up at various stages of the moon, right? If this is how this is affecting me, then I want to be proactive about ways that I can raise my vibration during this phase. So it's really helpful to write down like, so today you could start with today, how I've been feeling today. You might re remember tomorrow or the, or excuse me, yesterday or the day before. So you could write something in, but literally checking in with yourself a few times a day. Like, you know, in the morning I felt like this, slept great, didn't sleep, you know, whatever, write it down. By noon I was like this. You might recognize that you weren't as hungry, um, like I said, you may recognize even that you lost weight because your energy was so high, your metabolism was speeding up, right? So take a look at that stuff. Okay, so in kind of regarding this and with high energy, I thought that I would start this reading out with a reading from the Tao, Tao Te Ching, okay? Um, and let's just see what message comes through. These are very uh, profound words about tapping into the one divine um, consciousness and it is a way of being it is like the way it is right okay so please show us a message that would be helpful for the collective here right now today on this Pisces new moon okay the number on it is 77 interesting because that's a very spiritual number it says as it acts in the world, the Tao is like the bending of a bow. The top is bent downward, the bottom is bent up. It adjusts excess and deficiency so that there is perfect balance. It takes from what is too much and it gives to what isn't enough. Those who try to control, who use force to protect their power, go against the direction of the Tao. They take from those who don't have enough and give to those who have far too much. The master can keep giving because there is no end to her wealth. She acts without expectation, succeeds without taking credit, and doesn't think that she is better than anyone else. Wow, you know, how beautiful is that? Really, it just really makes you kind of step back, ask where you are in your life. Do you work? kind of with this, the, 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 the towel, right? It is what it is. Um, or do you feel like you're fighting, right? Um, do you feel like you are trying to control, to use force to protect your power? It goes against the direction of the towel. Okay. Wow, I'm just so moved by that. Like my heart is like beating really fast from that. <clears throat> okay, so the other thing that I wanted to do is because it is a new moon, I'm going to use this Moonology deck, um, Moonology Oracle cards here. These are by Yasmin Boland. And then I'm going to use the Earth Magic Oracle cards about um, 
getting kind of more getting grounded. Whoops. All right. What would you like to show us here for the collective? Just regarding moon cycles, what message do you have for us today? And you may watch this video on any day that isn't where the, it's the Pisces new moon, but it does give you this idea to start checking in with your energy and a couple of times a day, set an alarm, have a calendar, write it down, right? Especially if you can have one where you can start seeing like where the moon is, um, what uh, zodiac sign is the moon in, right? And um, because those energies, it's, you know, in a way like a clock, right? So our planets move around the sun, right? In a way, it's like a clock. So eventually they come around again that time. Uh, everyone varies, like how often something comes around. So, I mean, there's, there's so many amazing things in astrology. But whatever's going on up there is kind of going on in here. And it's just about taking a look at it. That's a, about the as above, so below. Or the as within, so without, right? So if I'm feeling anxious, it's like there's a lot going on on the cosmic level okay what would you like to show us here okay i have blue moon oh i just love that so this is believe in the impossible so this is so beautiful because if your energy is high this is like a great time it's saying to yes work towards your um goals to believe because your thoughts create your reality right and so if you ever hear yourself going, oh, you know, no, this, no, that, no. It's like, say, what can I do to turn my thoughts around? You can literally say, you know what? It isn't impossible. It's totally possible. And I'm taking steps and I'm telling the universe, yes, that I am working towards this. I'm showing the universe that this is what I want. Um, by taking an action step, then the universe responds. Then we take another action step. It is a dance with the universe, okay? Okay. So here is the card for that. Believe in the po impossible. I love that once in the blue moon thing. <laughs> okay, what else do you have for us here? The energy is gaining momentum. That is in a waxing moon. I'm sorry, I just want to tip this a little. That is in a waxing moon. So here's an image of the waxing moon, right? So this is where, you know, you see that on a calendar and you're like, okay, so maybe I'm just kind of feeling like, um, you know, my, my peaceful, calm self. But then all of a sudden it's, it's like, okay, say, say you never drink coffee or whatever, or energy drinks or anything like that. And now it's like, okay, the energy is gaining momentum. Now maybe you have a cup or half an energy drink and you start to notice energy is picking up, right? You're noticing it. You can feel it internally, right? Not only can you feel it internally, what you feel internally, internally, you can experience in the energies outside of you. So you know how, um, it's, it's well known, like, uh, police departments, fire departments, like all the services, hospitals, nursing homes, they always say that when it is a full moon, there's so much going on. And the reason is, is because we have so much water in us, the moon has the ability to pull in the tides, right? So it's the same thing. It's pulling out the stuff that we have literally stuffed. So we get emotional and we might not even know what it's all about, how something came up. We start crying at, you know, <laughs> we might just walk past something and start crying and we're like, whoa, what, what was that all about? It pulls up a memory that you suppressed and then it's just ready to be released. And so that is a beautiful gift um, so that we don't have to carry it around anymore, right? Okay, the next one that I have here is you're very close to achieving your goal. That's Jibis Moon. So that's really beautiful. So thinking about what have you been um, working towards? And this is, you know, that feeling of, yes, that feels so good that I'm very close to achieving your goal. So maybe, for instance, you're saving for a new car. Maybe you're getting ready to move. Maybe, you know... So it is about learning to um, not live in the energy of want, but it is about living in the energy of embodying the energy of like, oh, yes, I would. Yes, 
I am moving, right? I am, I am, not I want. I am. I am uh, owning a new home. I am living in this neighborhood, right? Go and drive in the neighborhood that you want to live in. Um, you know, talk to whoever you need to talk to about if you have to line up financing, right? And allow the universe to work with you because you keep putting out these desires into the universe and the universe will work with you. Your guides, your angels, they'll like direct you into serendipitous moments so things unfold. It, you know, depending upon where your energy is when you are manifesting. So anytime there's a new moon, this is that when you're taking the time to manifest that which you desire. So writing out, um, what it is that you would desire that you desire right um but just allowing for that to to work so if your energy is higher that's why manifesting so like this new moon can make people more energetic right so that means your vibration is going to be higher so when your vibration is higher you're manifesting in that which is higher if you are manifesting from a very low energy um that is what you'll attract in so you want to make sure you're not manifesting if you feel um sad depressed lethargic right you want to do this when you're feeling upbeat and um feeling really good. So if you're like, okay, I'm going to spend some time manifesting. Maybe you want to spend some time listening to some upbeat music and dancing and drinking lots of water to detoxify your body, make connections, right? First, before you spend time. Okay. The next one is, this is about the new moon in Virgo. It says a time to give rather than to take. Again, like energy attracts like energy. And even though the moon is in Pisces, there are still like all these remnants of these things going on. So this is something to consider yet, even in this moon. Right now in your life, how can you give rather than take? What do you have, even if it's, if it's not financial? In the area of time, treasure, or talent, what can you give to help another, right? Now, interestingly, this card is mostly green. So to me, this is um, uh, what can you give that is from the heart, right? Um, so, you know, now, now let's say that oftentimes, like, so for someone's birthday, <laughs> I just picked this up and shook it. I don't know why. Um, but see what this is? It's a little, um, it's got amethyst in there. But uh, if it's someone's birthday, obviously, we might get a gift, right? Um, but this is a time to give rather than to take. And when I'm speaking of gifts from the heart, sometimes someone might lean into making something. But this is not about a birthday, right? This is about how can I give to someone when it's not a birthday, right? Or a whatever. And um, help or do for another in this time, right? Okay, what else do you have? Conclusions are within reach. So this is a full moon eclipse, okay? Um, very beautiful too, look at that, full moon. So think about that, energies coming up, emotions coming up. An eclipse is when we are clipping off something or let releasing, right? Letting something go. So, um, things may be falling away. Um, it could be things, people, situations, um, could be, you know, various, various things. It could be, um, jobs, homes, right? Things could be falling away that are no longer serving you, right? It isn't that we walk around and go, are you serving me? <laughs> you know what I mean? But we do take a, this is about slowing down and taking a look at our life and saying, do I just have like 300 phone numbers in my phone and I probably really talk to 12 of those people, right? Um, so can we eclipse numbers out of our phone? Can we start thinning out our email? Can we really get down to what we're working with, right? The eclipse helps 
those kind of things happen. Um, sometimes it isn't always comfortable, right? So say you have a best friend who's been your best friend for many, many years, and all of a sudden they're moving and you realize that this is happening during an eclipse. And it's like, basically you're kind of eclipsing out of each other's life, at least for now, right? So there will be a shift and you will feel and notice that. Okay, the next one that I want to do is I want to lean into this Earth Magic Oracle cards because these are really, you know, like I said, tapping into nature and such. And so when we are looking at get, getting grounded, if we are feeling way too anxious. So like I said a few minutes ago, I was just really recognizing that within myself. And when I do these readings, it feels very um, fulfilling, grounding, helpful. Like I'm helping others, right? So that grounds me. Okay, what can you show us here today that would be helpful for the collective? What would you like to show us? Okay, I have ceremony. This is invocation. I'm going to read that in a minute, but this is about, it's kind of interesting because this speaks of having an altar and honoring each element, okay? And so, and, you know, just a small area like where you can pray, right? And it is simply a way of honoring each element. Um, and that's really what you start with. And then in time you can add... Um, I think they're just called little talisman or little things that kind of help you maybe work towards your goals that you look at. It's not about um, idle Terry, right? It's not about, oh, I love this and it is an idol. It's not. It is this, this small reminder, um, the small reminder of what you are working towards. But this is about connecting with your ancestors, your spirit guides, your angels, you know, with God, it's just about taking that time, looking at that and honoring nature so that that could be a way that helps ground you as well. Um, so when I, I guess when I take a look at that, you know, honoring each element. So whatever you could put on there that would honor each element, right? whether a glass of water, a crystal comes from the earth, you know, water, um, you know, thinking about all of that, a candle, right? Okay, what else do you have for us? Milky Way, perspective. <clears throat> the energy is gaining momentum. So it's important to, to understand how are you looking at things right now? Okay. What is your perspective? Now, this falls under the card that the energy is gaining momentum, right? So let me just go on a little bit. I might open the book and take a couple <clears throat> notes from this or read you a couple of the notes, I mean. All right, let's see. Winter solstice. This is about reflection. And it says you are very close to achieving your goal. So the, I know this is kind of an interesting thing, but this is, this is my vision. So say you are a singer songwriter and you, um, released an album and you've been out on tour and you've been doing all of this stuff. And, um, you know that your album is nearing number one. And when it hits number one, your life will change very, very, very dramatically because things happen, right, when that happens. And this is like this moment before the goal is fully achieved. This is where it's like things go into slow motion all of a sudden, and you are going to take some time for reflection before you step out onto that stage again because you feel that, you know, this stage is the stage that will push that song like right over the edge, right? Um, <clears throat> so this is about taking the time 
to reflect on all you've been through, where you are right now, Ooh, I'm full of goosebumps, where you are right now, and where it is that you'd like to be, right? Again, though, we don't want to live in the past. We want to just honor it, remember it, and let it move. It's moved through us, right? <clears throat> we want to really learn to be present, but looking towards the future, okay? All right, what else do you have for us? The shaman, ancient healing wisdom. So this is um, moving through you right now. And very interesting, it says a time to give rather than to take. And if you think about like, you know, the, um, the shaman, right? So, you know, you're, you're working with uh, medicines, natural medicines, you're tapping into uh, realms, other realms, bringing back wisdom for the um, people, right, of the earth and such. So this is about tapping into your shamanism and what do you have that you can offer to just give to another um, versus taking. And I think that that's so interesting too because um, you know, this guy, I would assume, is Native American. He's got the feathers in his hair. Um, you know, he could be an indigenous man of some sort. But, um, you know, it's about protecting the lands too, right? So instead of always taking from our land, what can we give back to our land? Can we plant trees? Can we clean the water? Can we clean up? Can we, you know, what ceremonies can we have to honor what we have been given and give thanks, right? Um, but this is a time to give your healing wisdom. All right, what else do you have here for us? I have Gaia. Oh, this is very moving to me and I'm so happy this came up because this was my very first Oracle deck and I remember that this was the very first card that I pulled because I was very much having, like, tapping into this thing about earth, right? And about the taking care of the lands, the earth, you know, because earth is a living, breathing being. And when we are constantly taking, the earth is struggling. So um, it's about rebuilding our earth and, you know, being more respectful, right? Um, trying to reuse different things in different ways, right? So just kind of being extra conscientious about that. And Gaia is another word for earth, right? Mother earth. But I love this image. Look at that. It's like she's nurturing, right? Gaia, our earth is known as mother earth, right? Um, and it says um, conclusions are within reach. Okay. All right. So the next thing that I'm going to do, oh, you know what? Really quickly, I wanted to go to that Milky Way for just a moment on perspective. Yeah, it says that, well, I won't get into all of that, but let's see. We're faced with the choice of abandonment or of our myopic vision in favor of seeing and accepting the bigger picture. Or we can just allow ourselves to be overwhelmed by a sense of smallness and helplessness, yet know that we are, we're composed of material from the very stars of the Milky Way. Thus, we're connected to Earth and the entire universe at all times, in life and in death. This says, you have lost your perspective, so it is time to step back, breathe, and allow yourself to detach in order, order to gather information from your senses and regain your perspective about the situation. Detachment does not mean that you no longer care. It simply indicates that you are looking at things from a different point of view. It is an outlet that is not clouded by emotions, judgment, 
or attachment to the outcome, but instead maintains a non-reactive awareness of these things. The witness, that internal aspect of yourself that simply observes everything in your life, offers his or her eyes here. Through these lenses of pure awareness, you can examine all aspects of your experiences, physical, emotional, and mental, without denying anything. By doing so, you will come to understand a greater perspective than is typically justified by the ego which allows you to see what is before you with a clear vision and an open mind. So if you can imagine yourself basically watching your yourself on TV, right? Um, but almost as if it were some, maybe someone else, you're, you're not, as you're not attached to the emotions. You're an observer now of what you've been going through and you're seeing it from a much higher perspective. So not only are you seeing your situation, you're zooming out a little more, zooming out, right? Um, and you're getting the bigger picture of kind of like what's going all on all over in the dance and, and how things are going. So this is about slowing down. And, and interesting, like I said, if your like energy is so up high, you feel scattered, you can lose perspective, even though you might be able to see, but it can, it can cause like like this feeling of disarray. So we want to pull down, calm down, settle down, right? To gain more perspective. All right. Okay. So now I'm going to go to this tarot deck. What would you like to show us here for the collective regarding this, this reading today? What would be helpful for the collective to know? <clears throat> Okay, a Knight of Cups, I'm going to put a card on each one of these. A Knight of Cups it is, the, is the energy of this reading, right? So a Knight of Cups is moving forward towards you with an offer in hand. Um, and it's an offer of love, right? And I love this because it falls on the Believe in the Impossible. The Blue Moon. Okay, the next one is the Eight of Wands, and it falls under the energy is gaining momentum. The Eight of Wands is indicative of communication that is coming in quickly, okay? I'm sorry, I don't know if I showed you this card. The Knight of Wands. All right. So, yeah, so something is, Offer of Love is coming in quickly. The energy is gaining momentum. Okay, and this is about resting in peace, the Four of Swords. You're just resting, and it says you are very close to achieving your dreams. So this is about, okay, so you can rest in that. It's not about fully resting on your laurels, but it is about a full faith and trust in knowing that you, you trust in the divine. You trust in the journey, right? Okay, what else do you have? Okay, I have the three of wands. This is about waiting for your ship to come in. Now, this is interesting because it is a time to give rather than to take. So someone may be moving towards you, right? Because often it could be someone who is from overseas. Um, so your ship may be coming in, but what's happening when the ship comes in? You know, oftentimes when we think, Oh, this, our ship is coming in because we are having great wealth come in, right? Or, you know, uh, but but it's like, okay, if this comes in, it is also a time to give, right? So keeping that in mind. Sorry, something just kind of, there we go. <laughs> anyway, the next card is... Um, an Empress Energy, it says the full moon in eclipse. Conclusions are within reach for this Empress Energy. The Empress embodies all four um, queens in the deck, okay? So let's just go a little bit further and see what else we have before I get into that more. So there are, there are conclusions in reach for an Empress. Um,
something is falling away. Okay. All right. So this is under the ceremony card, the page of pentacles. Okay. The page is a younger energy who's been working towards something. They're, they're kind of like, you know, steady Eddie. They're trying to build something. Um, but this falls under the invocation card about what is it that, um, you are honoring in nature. Um, the pentacles represent earthly things. So like the, like I was using the, these are the earth, it's the earth magic deck by Stephen Farmer. So maybe paying extra attention to nature, earth, right? With this page of pentacles or this page of pentacles who may have a message for you regarding, um, you know, work that involves, um, earthly matters, right? Okay, what else would you like to show us here? The pages are messengers though too. So, okay, perspective. <clears throat> so this was saying like you're you're kind of losing your perspective, right? Um, now here are the two of wands. So this is where it's saying it is time to make a choice. So the two of wands is about making a choice, but the wands represent action. So it's about, it's making a choice, but taking action, you know, as well. But making sure that when you're doing this, that you are more, more grounded, that your perspective isn't lost, right? That you're feeling more grounded as you do that. Okay, the next one is the Queen of Swords. So there's a Queen of Swords energy um, who is taking time to reflect. Now the Queen of Swords energy is somebody who is intelligent, um, you know, just astute. They're kind of, it's like more business, not as much play, right? Uh, their words are sharp, not all fluffy. But, you know, they're to the point and they're, um, they're intelligent and they're honest, right? So there would be a Queen of Swords energy who is taking time to reflect on a situation. But above that, it says you're very close to achieving your goal, okay? All right, the next one under the Shaman card, it says um, there is a Queen of Wands. So let me take a look at that. A time to give rather than to take. Okay. So the Queen of Wands is about, you know, takes action, is very creative, um, also intelligent. Um, I'm, I'm just looking at this card a little bit more. There's a sunflower on here, two red lions, so strength. Um, someone who takes action and is creative. So this to me is like saying, take action with your healing wisdom. Okay. Um, it is a time to give of your wisdom rather than to take. So maybe you've been learning and learning and learning and reflecting, right? And just taking in and taking in, but now it's like, okay, you've learned a lot. So now take the information and put it the, together the way that you need to, 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 to help others, right? <clears throat> okay, what else do you have for us here? Ooh, under nurturing Gaia, okay, the moon. So the moon, um, the moon card ha is things that are done like in the dark or there could be some illusion going on, something that you're not seeing clearly. Um, and that could simply be that you are being nurtured. Um, it has a Scorpio on it. It could be that you are being, um, one, nurturing a Scorpio or two, being nurtured by a Scorpio. But it is, um, it has water in here. So like nurturing of the water, right? Um, okay. Okay. So interesting. So that, so the last card that comes out here is like of a, of a, devil energy. So this can be about addictions, right? Um, so, so what have you been fighting through that might be causing you to lose your perspective, right? 
Now that could be, it could be earthly things, right? Experiences, relationships with people. It could be anything. It could be um, whatever, food, alcohol, drugs, you know, all different kinds of things. But it's the, that is representative of addiction. So I'm going to take one underneath here. Yeah. The Ace of Cups is the card that is underneath. This is an offer uh, of divine love. Okay. So an offer of love is coming to you. And like I said, so the Knight, Knight of Cups is moving in to, to you. Uh, moving in quickly. A message is coming in quickly. So you can rest in peace um, about this. Your ship is coming in. You're sitting in the Empress energy. There's a page of pentacles here again. So there's a message coming in about something that is related either to finances or um, earthly. It could be like a home, some, something like that. It could be both. So you have a choice to make. There's a queen of swords who is in reflection related to that and a queen of wands who is ready to share their information. Um, who It's time to nurture yourself and get out of the illusions and step away from this devil. Step away from things that are holding you back. Okay. So actually, I think that that's it. I think we're going to wrap this reading up. I want to say thanks for joining me. I hope you have an amazing day. Take care. Thank you.